Hello. <laughs> hey, uh, good afternoon everybody. Uh, my name is Nathan and today I will be talking about the use of camera traps uh, in estimating the abundance of otters. And welcome. Uh, I'd also uh, like to point out that this study and project may be slightly different to what you're expecting uh, from this. Now this project is very much in its infancy and we are actually developing this work um, and a key part of this phase is your involvement here. And so I've been discussing it with Marcelo and we decided together um, that this congress would be a perfect opportunity to introduce the project to you. Um, so thank you Marcelo for this. Because this is formally your invitation to participate in this exciting new project called Spot the Difference. Welcome everybody, Spot the Difference. Now, we are probably quite familiar with this childhood game of Spot the Difference. Um, you know, where you look for differences and similarities between two images. Cleverly here, what I've done, you'll notice that I've changed the word spot to spotter. Um, and we have also made other changes to formatting. Uh, there are actually six differences between these two images. Now, I can see you looking at me just thinking, what is he on about? Why are we here at an international congress going to play this childhood game of Spot the Difference? That's what you're thinking. You're thinking, why? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to be able to see if there's enough difference within a species or population to be able to identify individuals within it. Now, if it is possible, um, and this work is designed um, to see whether it is appropriate in order to uh, perform those capture, recapture analysis methods, uh, which I've heard many people already talking about uh, throughout this Congress. And then from this, we'll be able to advise field studies um, on estimating the abundance of species uh, and also perform methodological comparisons. Uh, throughout this Congress, we have heard uh, fantastic work, uh, particularly from Christine, on the uh, molecular analysis, um, providing a great potential. Um, in estimating abundance. Um, so the idea of this work is to be able to put this up against these different methods in order to find the most reliable and most efficient uh, method possible. But of course there is one final why, um, and that is we can use spot the difference to address one of the biggest conservation issues here uh, and priorities um, for species which lack that important data. How can we say that we want to protect an area where the population is high if we do not have that figure of if it is a high population or a low population? And if we don't have a reliable method which we can repeat at multiple different sites to be able to use it relatively? Is it higher here or lower there? And also one of the key priorities and research targets within the otter field is of course to develop indirect survey methods and so we'll be able to evaluate their validity. Welcome to Spot the Difference. Okay, now what better way to begin this story than the start? And for that we're going to turn to big cats. Now big cats obviously being elusive, being rare, being solitary, typically nocturnal and therefore difficult to study. So how can we estimate the abundance of these? Now they, they overcame that challenge with the use of camera traps over in India, where they were able to record these tigers on their camera traps, and they're able to identify individuals by their unique stripe pattern. From this, they were able to develop a capture history so they could perform the capture recapture analysis. Uh, just to clarify the uh, capture history, uh, in case you've never worked in this field, um, it's represented here by this table on the right, uh, where, for example, this tiger, let's call him Tiger 1, uh, he was observed on day 1. But then a new tiger has come into the area onto camera trap and he's recorded on day 2. Tiger 3 is uh, recorded on day 2 and recaptured on 3 and 4. Cool. Now, I am a big fan of audience participation here. 
Now I can see people getting a little bit uncomfortable in their chairs, their hands are getting a little bit sweaty, but I think we could do with a bit of exercise if we sat down for quite a few hours now. So, going to have a little warm up. These two images represent a tiger or two tigers walking past a camera. Now the question here is are these two tigers the same or are they different tigers? As I say, I am a big fan of audience participation here. But to eliminate any external bias, I will ask everybody to close their eyes now. What I will ask you to do is now, if you think these two tigers are the same individual, please keep your hands and arms lowered. If you think these two tigers are different individuals, please raise your hand now. Let's keep your hand lowered if they are the same, and your hands raised if they are different. Okay, keep your hands and arms exactly where they are. Please open your eyes and have a look around. You can see it's a fairly unanimous decision that these two are separate cats. They are two individuals. Now, you probably looked in this area here. Uh, typically for camera traps for the big cats, you will have your camera pointing across the trail to get that perfect side image, looking at the flank of the individual. But, even if in this case here, if these tigers walked past and you only got an image of the face, the head is completely different than the markings. If you just got the tail, you would still be able to tell it is two different cats. Even if you just got that back foot, you would be able to tell this is two separate individuals. So congratulations to everybody who got that right. Tiger 1 and Tiger 2. So we've identified a minimum population size of two. That's enough about tigers. I do realise we are at an auto congress. Um, so this is, of course, an otter study. Now this is a controlled case study. Do have images of otters photographed in a captive environment. Therefore, the population size is known. Now here's the otter challenge. You've had a bit of a warm up, a little bit of a stretch. You're ready for this. Okay, here are two images. I will help you out slightly by making these images larger. This is image number one. This is image number two. Should you wish for a refresher? This is image one once more. Okay. So two images, but how many otters? Now I think we're quite familiar with the exercise that we did a few moments ago, it works really well. So if I could ask everybody to now please close their eyes. If you think these two photographs are of the same individual, please keep your hands lowered. If you think they are of different individuals, please raise your hands. If you think they are the same otter, keep your hand lowered. If you think they are different otters, please raise your hand. Thank you, everybody. Keep your hands and arms exactly where they are. Now please open your eyes, everybody, and have a look around. A slightly different result, I'm sure you can agree. Not quite as easy as it was for the tigers. Now, the answer, I'm sure everybody's really keen. What was the answer? What was the answer? Tell us. Now, in the interest of the study, I cannot reveal the answer. <laughs> However, I can confirm that some of you were correct. So, well done to those people. Now, this study is about taking part. Now, clearly, you have been identified as the top otter people in the world. Firstly, congratulations, by the way. <laughs> so you are the top otter people in the world. 
You've identified yourself as that, or you have been identified by somebody else. So therefore you have the greatest knowledge, the greatest experience, and the greatest passion for otters. Therefore, who better am I to ask for support in this work? And to be able to provide the opportunity to advance the methods in which we are to study our focal group. Now, this is a very, very simple exercise. Now, these images, if you wish to participate, please do speak to me uh, at the end of this talk or at some point uh, and take my email address. You will receive a short online questionnaire about a batch of photographs. These will be the photographs taken within the captive environment. This is expected later in the year, and this is to spot the difference. That doesn't conclude the presentation. Okay, what we will do after that? Now the results of this work, we'll be able to look at the efficiency and the reliability of this technique of identifying individuals. Now if it is proven that we can identify individuals within the population, we will be able to do capture, recapture analysis, or at least advise that we do that, in the same way that we did with the tigers at the beginning of the presentation. Now if it's not possible to identify individuals, multiple methods have been proposed, as many of you who have worked with camera caps may be aware. For example, they have suggested, maybe if you get more images, there are more individuals in the population. But the problem with that, maybe you've got a, a larger species or a smaller species. A larger species is more likely to be, be detected than a smaller species. There are so many issues with this. The greatest promise is in the form of this random encounter model. It is the REM. Now REM, I am of course not talking about the 80s music artist. I am talking about the work of Marcus Routledge and colleagues uh, with the Zoological Society of London. Um, this is a method where you can estimate abundance without individual ID. This method works basically following principles of physics, um, whereby you factor the biological variables of the species of study and the characteristics of the camera. Now the camera works very similar to the human eye. It can see a particular distance and can see at a particular angle. If the camera can see further and wider, increased chance of detection. With the biological variables, if the animal is typically in a larger group, you have more chance. Similarly, if it moves a long way in a single day, you have more chance of capturing it. Now this animal day range. So here we have an otter image, um, photographed out in Costa Rica. And so what we're able to do is go to that point where the otter was. Uh, so we would look for key characteristics in the environment, for example, the rocks, and we would just mark it out. So we'd trace that animal movement path all the way across the screen, and we'd be able to measure it and record like this. We can see that that was a distance of four meters. Looking at the timestamp in the bottom corner, we'll see seven seconds. And then simple arithmetic will give us animal movement speed. Combine that with the activity uh, period data, which many people are confirming already, we'll be able to calculate uh, the distance moved uh, for this species. It is a promising, powerful tool, uh, although the expected due date is presently unclear. Meanwhile, uh, this is about engagement, and this is about you becoming involved in the project. Um, so please, as I say, do let me know if you or you could recommend anybody else to take part. And also, I would like to take this opportunity to suggest that Camera Chaps may actually be the window into the unseen or previously unseen natural world uh, for citizen scientists. We began this story, this journey, this presentation with the question why. Why are we going to play Spot the Difference? It's a childhood game. And yet, we've identified that we can play this game to address one of the largest conservation challenges, a fundamental aspect of a population. But I think there's one more question in this series. 
But the next question is a fundamental question which often gets ignored, doesn't get answered, just gets neglected. It's a simple, fundamental question of why conserve. If anybody would be interested in the Why Conserve project or would like to talk to me about it, please do so. I think it really has great potential and please do, as they speak to me. Okay, were they the same or different? I cannot confirm. Uh, but thank you very much for your attention and I apologize.